Number one, sinking our feet into shag carpeting. Ah, shag carpeting. The mere mention of it conjures memories of the 70s and 80s when interior design was, let's say, experimental. It's hard to deny that shag carpets were an acquired taste, resembling the unruly mane of a wild beast more than anything else. Yet, despite their questionable aesthetic, there was something undeniably comforting about them, especially when you kicked off your shoes and let your feet sink into their plush depths. Picture this. You walk into a room adorned with shag carpeting. The colors may be loud, the patterns may be bold, but as soon as your bare feet touch the surface, it's like stepping onto a cloud. The fibers envelop your toes in a gentle embrace, providing a sensation of warmth and softness that is unmatched by any other flooring option. It's as if the carpet is whispering, relax, take a load off. Sure, shag carpets may have been a nightmare to clean, collecting dust and debris like nobody's business. And yes, they were prone to matting and shedding, leaving behind a trail of fuzzy tufts wherever they went. But for many, the tactile pleasure of sinking their feet into that shaggy goodness was worth the hassle. There's something inherently nostalgic about shag carpeting, hearkening back to a time when life seemed simpler, when avocado green and harvest gold were considered fashionable, and when disco ruled the airwaves. It's a reminder that beauty is subjective that what may be an eyesore to some is a source of comfort and familiarity to others. Number two, laughing at Saturday Night Live. For many, Saturday Night Live SNL isn't just a comedy show. It's a cultural institution that has shaped generations of viewers. Even if you weren't old enough to stay up late and catch the latest episode when it first premiered in 1975, chances are you've encountered its influence through older siblings or parents who eagerly shared tales of its hilarity. The morning after an episode aired, it was like a ritual to sit with them and listen to their animated recaps, reliving each outrageous sketch and uproarious moment. The appeal of Senel transcends mere entertainment. It's about connection and shared experiences. Whether it's bonding with family members over iconic characters like the bumbling Mr. Bill or dissecting the political satire that defines the show, SNL has a way of bringing people together, sparking conversations, and forging lasting memories. What makes SNL unique is its ability to evolve with the times while retaining its irreverent spirit. Over the decades, the show has been a mirror reflecting the cultural zeitgeist, fearlessly tackling controversial topics and pushing boundaries with its trademark blend of humor and satire. From lampooning politicians to parodying pop culture phenomena, SNL has consistently captured the pulse of society, earning its place as a comedic touchstone for multiple generations. Beyond its comedic prowess, SNL has also served as a launch pad for some of the biggest names in entertainment. The show's roster of alumni reads like a who's who of comedy, with household names like Eddie Murphy, Tina Fey, and Will Ferrell honing their craft on its stage. For aspiring comedians and actors, SNL represents the ultimate dream, an opportunity to showcase their talent on a national platform and catapult their careers to new heights. Despite its longevity, SNL has not been immune to criticism or controversy. From accusations of pushing boundaries too far to facing backlash over certain sketches, the show has weathered its fair share of storms. Yet, through it all, SNL has remained resilient, adapting to changing times and emerging stronger than ever. Number three, doing the Village People's Young Men's Christian Association dance. The 70s were an era of iconic dances, and among them, the Village People's Young Men's Christian Association dance stands out as a timeless classic. It's a dance that not only encapsulates the spirit of the disco era, but also serves as a nostalgic reminder of carefree moments and vibrant nights spent on the dance floor. When the opening beats of Young Men's Christian Association fill the air, it's as if a collective energy awakens and suddenly everyone is transported back to a simpler time. 
For those who grew up during the 70s, the urge to spell out the letters Y, M, C, and A with their arms is almost instinctual. It's a reflexive action, a muscle memory deeply ingrained from countless nights of dancing and revelry. The charm of the Young Men's Christian Association dance lies not just in its simplicity, but also in its universality. Regardless of age or background, people from all walks of life find themselves drawn to the infectious rhythm and catchy lyrics of the song. It's a unifying experience that transcends barriers, bringing together strangers on the dance floor in a shared moment of joy and camaraderie. But beyond its entertainment value, the Young Men's Christian Association dance holds a deeper significance for many. It's a symbol of freedom and self-expression, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. In an era marked by social and political turmoil, disco offered an escape, a chance to forget the troubles of the world and lose oneself in the music. Today, as we look back on the heyday of disco, the Young Men's Christian Association dance remains a beloved relic of a bygone era. It serves as a reminder of the power of music to uplift and unite, transcending generations, and leaving an indelible mark on popular culture. Number four, growing up with Sesame Street. Sesame Street holds a special place in the hearts of many, especially those who grew up in the 1970s. For us, the show wasn't just a form of entertainment, it was a cornerstone of our childhood, shaping the way we viewed the world and ourselves. As 70s kids, we were part of the first generation to witness the magic of Sesame Street from its inception and its impact on our lives was profound. From the moment the colorful characters graced our television screens, we were captivated. Big Bird with his endearing innocence, Grover with his lovable clumsiness, Bert and Ernie with their timeless banter. These characters became more than just puppets. They were our friends, our teachers, and our guides through the maze of childhood. Sesame Street wasn't just about teaching us the ABCs and 123S. It was about instilling values of kindness, diversity, and acceptance. Through its engaging stories and catchy songs, the show tackled important topics like friendship, sharing, and empathy, laying the foundation for crucial life lessons that would stay with us long after the credits rolled. As we reflect on our childhood memories of Sesame Street, we can't help but feel a sense of nostalgia for those simpler times. It was a time when the biggest decision we had to make was whether to watch Cookie Monster devour cookies or Oscar the Grouch grumble from his trash can. Yet beneath the lighthearted humor lay a deeper message, one of inclusivity and understanding that resonated with us then and continues to resonate with us now. Sesame Street wasn't just a TV show, it was a cultural phenomenon that brought people together across generations. Whether we were sitting in front of the TV with our siblings or gathered around with friends at daycare, Sesame Street was a shared experience that united us in laughter, learning, and love. Number five, expressing ourselves with mood rings. It's funny how something as simple as a ring with a color-changing stone could become a symbol of expression for an entire generation. Back then, talking openly about our feelings wasn't exactly the norm. There was this unspoken rule that you kept your emotions to yourself buried under layers of societal expectations and personal insecurities. But then along came the mood ring, quietly encouraging us to acknowledge and share how we felt without uttering a single word. For us 70s kids, flashing the color of our mood ring became our way of communicating without actually communicating. It was like a secret language encoded in shades of blue, amber, and black, if you saw someone wearing a mood ring, you instantly knew there was more to their mood than meets the eye. It was an invitation to delve deeper into their emotional world, to connect on a level that went beyond small talk and surface interactions. What made the mood ring even more fascinating was its mysterious mechanism. How did it know what color to turn? 
Was it really tapping into our emotions? Or was it just a clever gimmick designed to capitalize on our fascination with the mystical and unknown? Regardless of the science behind it, the magic of the mood ring lay in its ability to spark conversations and foster genuine connections among wearers. Looking back, it's easy to dismiss the mood ring as nothing more than a passing fad, a relic of a bygone era. But for those of us who wore them, it represented something far more profound. It was a tangible reminder that our feelings mattered, that it was okay to express ourselves in unconventional ways. In a world where words often failed us, the humble mood ring spoke volumes, bridging the gap between silence and understanding.